Thank you very much. I would like to thank the organizing committee, especially Dr. Halal, for giving me the chance of uh, giving this uh, presentation. First of all, uh, this is a very delicate subject. It's a very rare disease, and uh, dealing with these uh, cases uh, is very challenging. So uh, the annual incidence of hepatoblastomas have doubled in the last decades, and uh, it's, re it's reached 1.6 uh, cases per 1 million in children less than 19 years old. The increasing incidence uh, may be a result of the increasing survival of the premature, uh, which, uh, with premature birth uh, with a very low bir uh, birth weight. As the low birth weight is known to be the associated, mostly associated with hepatoblastoma. In Japan, the risk of hepatoblastoma in children who weighed less than one kilogram at birth is 15 times uh, the risk of uh, hepatoblastoma in, in normal birth uh, children. So hepatoblastoma usually occur before the age of three, and approximately 90% of malignant liver tumors uh, in children aged four years and less are hepatoblastoma. So uh, there are some conditions associ associated with an increased risk of hepatoblastoma. There are uh, congenital syndromes like Icardi syndrome, Beckwith-Wiedemann syndrome, FAP, and glycogen storage disease one and four, low birth weight, like we said, and simpson uh, simpson gulab development syndrome, trisomy 18, and other trisomies. If you have a child uh, or infant with these syndromes or these high risk, so he, he has to be screened with an ultrasonography and alpha photoprotein every three months uh, from birth to the f until the four years of old. It will identify 90 to 95 percent of hepatoblastomas that develop in these children. So how do we diagnose hepatoblastoma? Uh, uh, first, we start with the tumor markers. Alpha photoprotein is elevated in 90 percent in hepatoblastoma patients. A non-elevated alpha photoprotein, which is less than 100, in a confirmed hepatoblastoma by a biopsy case is a sign of poor differentiated with a, with a worse prognosis. So a sign of low alpha photoprotein is bad. Uh, note that alpha photoprotein is normally elevated in children until one year of old. So this can be a pitfall. And can be elevated in other medical conditions. It usually increases post-hepatectomy in the patient, so you cannot follow up hepatectomy patients with alpha photoprotein due to liver regeneration, and uh, is indicative, but is not a specific tool for diagnosis. Beta-HCG can be elevated in hepatoblastomas too. So the second tool of diagnosis is the imaging. So we can see a, trivasi a triphasic CT scan and a dynamic MRI for the same case. You see a hyperdense geographic lesion that takes contrast, you have two lesions in this case. So the other case, the other the tool of diagnosis is uh, uh, CT and MRI. So uh, before going to the treatment, you have to go to the, what we call the preoperative staging. What it's called is the tumor stratification before, by imaging, before taking the decision. So tumor risk stratification into anatomical risk groups defines the treatment strategy for hepatoblastoma. So uh, it's called the pretext classification, which is before chemo and the post-text after chemo. We'll go through that fast. So pretext classification is based on the quino sectorial anatomy of the liver. And you see the sector of the liver, which uh, dissect it is divided into four sections and the eight segments. And pretext classification goes from one to four, depending on where is the tumor located in these sections. And the highest, the pretext is the the uh, the worst the prognosis is. We're gonna go through that more. So, other than the pretext uh, classification anatomically, it is added, which is called the additional annotations. The additional annotation is that. If the uh, lesion is uh, invading a portal vein or a hepatic vein, is the lesion is uh, extrahepatic with an E, uh, multifocal with an F, ruptured or uh, nodal involvement, uh, caudate lobe or distant metastasis. So whenever. Yeah. 
Allora. So whenever, uh, wherever is the tumor in the liver goes into the classification, uh, the pretext uh, one to four, and whether the tumor is invading any structure of these gives you a higher risk in this tumor. So this classification puts the patient into uh, a, a risk groups for neoadjuvant chemo or a survivor late. So patient with a pretext one, which is one tumor lateral in the liver, or one tumor uh, lateral in the liver preserving like 90% of the liver, it's called pretext one with a 93% survival. It goes worse whether the tumor invades multiple sec sectors it, and the survival goes down to 52%. Uh, about the annotation, so the five year overall survival rates with the additional annotation varies, it decreases overall any invasion of any vessel inside the liver, it decreases the survival rate, the survival rate additional 50%. So uh, the, th the third tool for the risk classification is the biopsy. So a biopsy is ind indicated in all hepatoblastomas except the early stage, tumors that would need preoperative chemotherapy. So confined to one or two sector, pretext one, away from the hepatic portal vein. So th these patients can go directly for surgery without neoadjuvant chemo. So uh, this is the only case where uh, biopsy is not uh, indicated. Although the histological classification of hepatoblastoma is sometimes used in the risk classification. So whether it's a bad histology, even if the pretext is early, it gives you a worse prognosis. So maybe a patient with a low pretext and has a bad histology, he might need neoadjuvant chemo. So the pre, uh, le let's go to the tumor classification by histology. Uh, it uh, varies, it's a multiple classification, but it is the, the least one is the well-differentiated fetal, which is called pure fetal histology hepatoblastoma. It has the best better prognosis and in some limited cases may not need neither neoadjuvant nor adjuvant chemotherapy. And the worst one is the small cell undifferentiated histology, hepatoblast histology he hepatoblastoma, which has the worst prognosis. So if you accumulate the two risk classifications, anatomy over the histology, if you have a very bad prognosis biopsy on a low pretext, you might need neoadjuvant chemotherapy on that child and post-op chemo. So overall risk classification, I try to uh, resume that with a good prognosis patient who have high alpha fructose protein with a confirmed diagnosis, which is the secreting differentiated tumor, and patients with less than two liver, le uh, liver sections involved, so pretext one to two, patient with no vascular involvement, no local or distant metastasis, which are unifocal in the liver, and there is no tumor rupture. And of course, the well-differentiated pure fetal histology. These are have the, the good prognosis. But on the other hand, the bad prognosis are with a low alpha photoprotein with a confirmed on biopsy hepatoblastoma, more than two liver sections involved, pretext three to four, vascular involvement, local or distant metastasis, multifocal tumor, a tumor rupture, or a small cell poor, poorly differentiated histology. If you do the matching, you would know who p which patient would need neoadjuvant and post op post-op uh, chemo. So what's overall treatment of hepatoplastoma? Treatment options are the, are, uh, the, are the following. Whether the cancer is resectable at diagnosis or by the tumor histology or how the cancer responds to chemo or whether the cancer has metastasized or not. I tried to uh, reduce the slide to the least possible. So patient can be resectable at diagnosis. The number of cases is very low which has 20 to 30% of the cases, which we they go upfront surgical resection. The outcome, outcome of the upfront uh, surgical uh, resection will depend on the histologic type. If the patient is well differentiated with the vital histology, like 4% of the whole hepatoblastoma, they have a five year overall survival of 100%. So they might go post-op without any chemo, minimal or no, uh, no adjuvant chemotherapy. If the patient is a non-well differentiated fetal histology and non-small cell undifferentiated, which is half-half. Uh, they are, these patients are 90, uh, are the, 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 
they have a three to four year of, of our survival of 90 to 100 percent with adjuvant chemotherapy. So these patients who are who are not well differentiated will need adjuvant chemo. If any small cell undifferentiated elements are present in the histology, the three year survival goes down to 40 to 70 percent. So uh, the other scenario is the non resectable at diagnosis, which unfortunately is the 70 to 80 percent of the cases. They go chemotherapy first, followed by assessment for surgical resectability and complete surgical resection. If it is feasible on, on a liver or a liver transplant, if it is not technically resectable. So some uh, techniques are palliative for a non-resectable, non-transplantable patient, which are the taste, transarterial chemobilization or radioembolization. They they usually for palliative case. So the other the, the third scenario is metastatic on diagnosis. So you start by chemotherapy and then you assess the resurgical resectability. If the primary tumor and extra hepatic disease both are resectable after chemo, so we go for surgical resection of the original and the metastasis because the survivor is very good. Surgical resection is followed by additional chemo, adjuvant. If the extra hepatic metastatic disease is complete remission after chemo and or the surgical resection of lung nodule, but the primary tumor unresectable, for example, with a huge liver mass, had chemotherapy, had a lung metastasis. After chemo, the lung metastasis disappeared, so he's responding. But the mass is non-resectable, so the patient goes for liver transplant. Survivor is very good. So the last scenario, which is bad, is extrahepatic metastatic disease, non-resectable, and non-transplant candidate. We go back for the chemo, chemo embolization or radio embolization or external beam radiation therapy. So these are overall the the last uh, case is if, if the tumor progresses on chemo, or so non-responder, or is a recurrent. So surgical resection for an isolated metachronous distant metastasis under chemo control. So you did the hepatectomy, and then three months later, he has a lung metastasis. You go and resect the metastasis because the, the survivor is good on chemo. So our a liver transplant for a non-resectable local recurrent. So you did the hepatectomy on the right side. Three months or four months later, he has a recurrence on the left liver. You cannot mo do more hepatectomies on the patient, but he's responding overall. He's not metastatic, so he goes for liver transplant. And uh, if a patient has a widespread uh, recurrence, he goes for second-line chemo, or like we said, non-resectable, non-responder, non he goes for palliative procedure like percutaneous ablation, radioembolization, or chemo embolization. So uh, risk sc scenarios after risk assessment. So either as initial initial surgical resection alone for with or without chemo, a delayed surgical resection with those chemo first, orthotopic liver transplant, cadaveric, uh, most often preceded by chemo, the transplant, surgery for the distant metastasis, or surgery or liver transplant for local recurrence. It's, uh, it's, more, it's a small summary. So I have to, I, I'm going to present four cases uh, that we uh, did together with Dr. Two Hassan Khalise. Two more minutes. Uh, I, I, I need to go fast, please. But it's a very interesting case. There is an, uh, uh, the, the take-home message from hepatoblastoma. So four patients, three males, one female, ages from uh, 14 months, 15 months, 18 months. So weight range from 7.5 kg, the smallest one, to 16 kg. All were stratified as intermediate risk by pretext imaging. W and they had all mixed histology, so no one was pure fetal, and no one was uh, small cell. They all underwent surgical resection with free margin after chemo. So final, pat final pathology showed marked tumor classification, necrosis, with a less, to to uh, less than 5% embryonic liver cells. So they all responded to chemo. They all uh, uh, had neoadjuvant chemo. The first case is a 15-month girl with a pretext one with zero portal involvement, this is the portal, with zero hepatic vein involvement. She had a pretext one, this one, this case. And she had this large tumor of the left liver, left lateral segment, but she had no portal involvement, no hepatic involvement. She had resection of the left lateral. This was the tumor. And she had a follow-up imaging at three, four, uh, three months with no recurrence. The second case is more interesting. 
that was a pretext two with portal involvement and hepatic vein involvement. So he had a pretext to this case huh? with a portal vein involvement and a hepatic vein involvement. If you go back to the CT, you see that this is the middle hepatic vein. The left hepatic vein is not there. And this is the left portal vein. This is P4, but the portal three and four are involved. So, and he, this is like that, exactly. So he had, uh, at that time, this patient had a left lateral hepatectomy. And uh, the result is beautiful, as you see. There is the tumor resected completely. This is the right uh, lobe of the liver. And, pre and we left segment four. It's not a left hepatectomy. And CT of follow-up, one month, the patient had a local recurrence. Where? In segment four, where we left segment four anatomically. So a uh, patient admitted for re-resection, but the pre-op lab showed elevated LFTs and transandinizers. Viral studies showed acute hepatitis T on this patient. And uh, no transfusion was given pre-op anyway. So surgery was postponed, and the patient showed rapid flare-up of his recurrence and showed bilobar liver disease and uncontrolled liver disease when you lung metastasis. Uh, case three, it was a 4.5-year-old boy, pretext one, but with a venous involvement. So we learned from that mistake. And we said, uh, even if it is removable like that, with a left lateral, this patient should go a left formal hepatectomy. And that's what happened. It was this case. He had a venous involvement, no portal involvement, but it was in the left lateral. This is the tumor. See, the whole this liver is free, but the vein here is involved. This is the tumor. So we, had a, we did a left uh, formal hepatectomy, although the tumor is very far. And this is a formal left hepatectomy. This is the tumor. This is segment four that was removed. This case had a very wonderful outcome. No recurrence after three months on CT. Last case is a, four mon uh, is a 14 months old boy, pretext two, with portal involvement, no venous involvement. To see, this is the posterior sector, portal vein on the right side is involved. So we had, although we could do have done posterior sectorectomy, but we did a right formal hepatectomy. And this is the tumor of this child. So we had the right formal hepatectomy. This is the right lobe. This is the left lobe. This is the IVC. And this is the portal vein on the left side. This is the hanging maneuver, if you want. So this is the right lobe with the tumor. See how big is the tumor. Follow up. Uh, this is a three months follow up. No right lobe. No local recurrence. Wonderful regeneration. So uh, discussion of these cases, I wanted to give you this message. In, in, in case two, the patient had the pretext two, low risk patient but he had a vascular involvement. Although the tumor was easily resectable through a left lateral segmentectomy, but it was an oncologically unsafe because of the possible spread of the tumor cells through the left portal branches. So when you have a tumor here, although it's only confined to this section, it has a higher risk to metastasize here because the tumor cell can pass through the portal vein when it's involved. It's, uh, this law is typical for HCC and hepatoblastoma. But uh, it, uh, in hepatoblastoma, you have more margin to resect because the liver is normal, it's healthy. In HCC, you cannot, you don't have more room to resect. That's why. Uh, this. So the gold, the, gold, the gold standard for a portal or any vascular involvement in hepatoblastoma is anatomical resection. So due to the high rate of recurrence in patients with positive vascular invasion, the resection in hepatoblastoma may be safer with a wider anatomical resection, as long as the liver remnant allows it. Hepatocellular carcinoma occurs mostly in a diseased liver that does not allow you larger resections like hepatoblastoma. Care should be taken when dealing with higher pretext class or accompanying vascular invasion in the planned surgical decision. Well, thank you very much. Uh,